working children, it's Mrs Hall here and we are going to do lesson 21 of my phonics lessons. Now if you remember in lesson 20 I told you that we had finished phase four now um, so I think we're just going to keep practicing our writing and doing what we call writing for a purpose. So writing for different reasons okay and we're going to use all the things we've learned in phases two, three and four to help us, lots of segmenting and things, okay. I'm going to do the phase three flashcards first. We're going to do it a bit differently today. I'm going to say a word, and you're going to tell me the vowel digraph or trigraph that you can hear in the middle, or a consonant digraph or trigraph. It's usually in the middle, sometimes at the beginning or at the end. Okay, are you ready? The first one is in the word night. What is in the middle of the word night? That's right, it's I. Well done if you got that one. Okay, this one is in the middle of goat. What is it? It's the O, well done. Okay, next one is in the middle of moon, but also book. Can you remember which one it is? It's the O and O. I think I've got it upside down. There we go. Okay, the next one is in the middle of feet. Okay, do you know which one it is? It's the E, grapheme and phoneme. Well done. Okay, this one is in the middle of rain. Can you think what it is? It's the A. Well done. Okay, now this one usually comes at the beginning of words, okay? And it's at the beginning of the word quack. Can you think which one it is? It's the grapheme. And remember, we very rarely see this letter Q on its own without its best friend U. Okay, this one is at the beginning of the word thumb and then. It makes two different phonemes. Can you think which one it is? It's the th and z. Well done. Okay, this one is in the middle of the word park. We all like going to the park, don't we? So it's the R phoneme. Well done. This one is at the end of the word cow. Can you think which one it is? It's the owl phoneme. Well done. This one can come in the middle of words and at the end of words, and it makes two different phonemes. It comes in the middle of the word herb and at the end of the word ladder. Can you think which one it is? It's the er uh and uh. Well done. Okay, this one is in not many words at all, but it's at the end of the word pure. Can you think which one it is? It's our trigraph, it's you. well done. Okay, this one is in the middle of the word burn. Which one is it? It's the uh, well done. Okay, this one is at the end of the word fish. Which one is it? It's a consonant digraph, it's a shh, well done. This one is in the middle of the word point. Can you think what it would be? Point. I'm going to show you. It's a oi. Well done. This one is at the end of the word ring. Can you think what it is? It's at the end of ring. It's a mm, another consonant digraph. Well done. Okay. This one is in the middle of the word beard. Like Mr. Beard. Which one is in the middle? It's a trigraph again. It's ear. Well done. Okay. This one is at the end of the word chair. Can you think what it is? Not the beginning. It's the end. It's another trigraph. It's air. Well done. Okay. This one is at the beginning of the word chair. So the other phoneme in chair, which is a consonant digraph. Ch. Well done. And one more. This one is in the middle of the word fork. Something we use to eat our dinner. What is in the middle of the word fork? It's our 
or grapheme and phoneme. Well done if you got those right. Now, if you could say all of those phonemes before I showed you them, next time I want you to try and go back to the beginning of this video and see if you can write them before I show them. That's another challenge for you. See if you can write the grapheme. Okay, I have said that we are going to be doing a bit more writing, but we're going to do our alphabet song next. And we're going to do a little bit of letter formation, okay? Some letters are quite tricky. We're going to focus on those. So let's start with our alphabet song. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. All the letters came to T. H, I, J, K, L, M, N. The food was quite delicious. O, P, Q, R, S, T, U. V and W, they came to X and Y ate all the pie and Z washed up the dishes. Now remember the alphabet, when we sing that song, we use letter names. Now it's getting a little bit more important sometimes to use letter names when you're spelling, okay? Because it makes it much clearer what you have to write. So we have to know the phoneme and the letter name now. We are doing phase four. Okay, the letters that we are going to form are all formed quite similarly and I will show you they all start with a letter C, okay? They all start in the same direction. It's called orientation. That's the way we write a letter, the wh which way it goes and formation is what it looks like when we've finished and the right way round, okay? So the letters we're going to have a go at, the first one is the letter C and we know that it goes this way. So we start here and we go up a little bit and round and up at the end. We don't join it though, C. Now, the next letter we're going to have a go at is just like the C, but this time we're going to close it up. It's an O. So we start in the same direction, here we go. But this time we're going to join it up. There's our O. We need to make sure that they're virtually the same size, okay? Letter sizing is also quite important and it's position on a line, okay? So that's the O. The next one we're going to do is A and it starts in the same way. So we go round like a curly K, but this time we join it up and then go down and flick. And again, that's the same size, okay? The next one we're going to have a go at is the D, a D. D, D. And we did that last week. I had my poster, which unfortunately I've left at school this week. So it starts in the same way, like a curly K. All these letters start in the same way. So D, we do round like a curly K. And we do the drum before the drumstick. D. Now that one's got a, it's a tall letter. We call this part the ascender because it goes up, up, up. Okay. Next one we're going to do is a G or a G, okay? Again, it starts in the same way like a curly K. Then we join it up, we go down, 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 and then it has a tail that goes underneath. And this bit that goes down is not an ascender going up, it's a descender going down, okay? And the last one I'm going to show you is Q. Again, it starts in the same way. So we go round like a curly K, join it up, down, and then we do a line back up at an angle there. That's a Q. It's the only letter that does this at the bottom. It's got a D center. It goes down below the line. If these letters were sitting on the line, it would look, although not quite so wobbly, something like that, okay? Now, it's really important that we work on our letter formation all the time, making sure that we're forming those letters correctly. So keep on trying. Right, today's writing for a purpose. I thought I'd tell you a little bit about my day, okay, and all the things that I've been doing today. Now, today has not been a work day for me. I've not been at school. I have been at home. It was a Sunday. Obviously, I recorded this on a Sunday, but you might not be watching it on a Sunday. So, here is my list of things that I've done today. I hope you can see it, because I know sometimes my whiteboard gets a little bit shiny. So, I'm really hoping you can see that. Okay, so there are some to read, and then we're going to add 
a couple at the bottom, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to point to them in turn and then I'm going to give you a little bit of time or your mummy or daddy might pause the video for you to give you time to look at my sentence and then I'm going to get you to read it with me, okay? Without all the segmenting things. That's your job to do at home, okay? So, I'm going to point to the first one. Get mummy and daddy to pause it while you have a look. And then when you're ready, we'll play it and read it together, okay? I might put my hand up like Mr. Hughes, okay? He, that's his pausing hand. Right, here we go. Okay, let's read it together now. It says, I got out of bed. That's the first thing I did this morning. I got out of bed. There are all words that you could have a got writing to. Okay, number two, have a look. I'm going to use my pausing hand, get mommy and daddy to stop the video. Okay, did you practice in your head at home? Are you ready? Spotting keywords and segmenting. I went for a long run. Did you get that? Well done if you did. Okay, third sentence. I did have a busy day. It's only just started on my list. Here we go. This is the next one we're going to read. I'm going to put my pause hand up. Now there's a very tricky word in this, so just be careful. Okay, the next one. We had, now this says breakfast. It's a very tricky spelling now. Did anybody get that word at home? I always have my breakfast after a long run. Okay, next one I'm going to point to it. Get mommy and daddy to pause it. Work it out in your head. Okay, it says, I fed my rabbit. You've heard about my rabbit buddy, haven't you? He's very greedy, he likes his hay in the morning. Now, I'm just gonna add a couple more because I have had a busy day. The next one I want to write is, we had dinner. Ooh, we're gonna have curry tonight for my dinner, so I can't wait. Okay, so the first word is we. We've seen that word before and it's one of our tricky words. I know how to write that one straight away. We. Okay. The next word is had. 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 Easy peasy. And I've got to remember to get my D the right way around. Drum before drumstick. We had. Now dinner. I'm going to do another D. Drum before drumstick. And I know it's an I next. Now, this is one of those words with the I uh at the end again. So I know sometimes we double that middle consonant. And I think it's an N mm in the middle. So I'm going to do two. And then the I uh phoneme at the end is made by our ER. There we go. I'm going to put a full stop there. Okay. And the last thing I'm going to do today, or I'll pretend I've already done it, but we'll see. I'm going to go to bed. So I went to bed, okay? We know how to do I, easy peasy. There we go. Went is a very common word that we use as well when we're writing about our day. Went. Ooh. Eh. Now we've got our phase four blend at the end. Let's segment it. Ooh, eh, n, tch. I can hear two consonants, an n and a t. I went two. Two is one of our tricky words. It's got two letters and it's not the number two. It's where you're going to do something or going to somewhere and it's a T and an O. Okay. And bed is an easy peasy one. Let's segment it. B, E, D. And it's got our B and E in it. So, B. Remember? Back before ball. B, E, and D is drum before drum stick. Bed. I went to bed. 
What a busy day. I wonder if you could write me a list of all the things that you've done today using your phonics and remembering all those important things. Now I've got a little list that I've written. So these are the important things to remember when you're writing. So number one, your letter formation. We have shown you how to form all these letters correctly, okay? Starting in the right place, using the right formation, and ending in the right place too, particularly with your B and D. We always stretch or segment our words before they write them, before we write them, unless it's a tricky word. Sometimes tricky words we just know, but every other word you should be segmenting and having a go before you write it. Okay, now when you're writing a word, it's really important that you write the whole word, the beginning, the middle, and the end. Don't miss any of those phonemes out if you can. Try and get them all. Okay. Another one, when we're writing sentences, really important that we use our finger spaces because sometimes it can look just like a jumble of letters, but when you look more closely, it's actually words. So using those finger spaces helps the reader to read your words that you've written. Okay. The next one, we usually use a capital letter and a full stop. Now these aren't strictly street speaking proper sentences because it's more of a list, but I've still used a capital letter at the beginning and a full stop at the end. Remember if it's a question, we'll use a question mark. And the number one most important thing is check it. When you've finished your sentence, you must check it and read it back to yourself and see if it makes sense because you might be able to spot some mistakes that you can put right. Okay, they're all my things to remember. See if you can remember all of those things next time you do writing. Remember to have a go at your list and see if Mommy can, or Daddy can post it on Twitter for you. Thank you for listening. Bye.